and as a, as a young man, as a 25-year-old, and even for the people watching, how do you, what, what are some, what's the frame of mind you need to create for yourself to be able to hang out with someone almost twice your age and they will, uh, you, to benefit from that individual? Asante Sana for joining us for another classic episode of the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. Hii wiki mazeni moto sana. In fact, your story wacheni tuanze show na story meiva. Nazima tuanze show na story ikona nyama mazi. A Mombasa based chef anaito Maliha Mohamed now holds the Guinness World Record for spending the most hours cooking. She earned her spot in the Guinness Book of Records for spending the most time in the kitchen. <laughs> The new record has not been ratified by the time to end an issue, but congratulations are in order. Wapi makofi yake? Thank you. Thank you. She deserves her flowers. Lakini this will be a controversial one because if they were to define cooking, who in Kenya would win the Guinness uh, World Record for cooking the longest? Because 90, hour, 90 hours is also the exact amount of time watu wanaivasha utumia kupika punda mbaka ikuwe soft. <laughs> Eh hey, manze, hiyo ni nyama gani hiyo manze? Wameniambia ni beef. Lakini kuna video inamomunyika kama tilapia. <laughs> Lakini samaki haikuagi na magoti. <laughs> Kumbe ni nyama ya punda imekutana na maji moto for 4 days. Now there have been claims that um, Kenyans did not support this initiative as they should. Like wasi hawakutokea vile sisi utokea. In fact, there are claims that at one point there were only 100 Kenyans watching Maliha cooking live. That's the most underwhelming I've ever seen Kenyans keeping it at a hundred. But then again, but then I would understand why Kenyans, um, where Kenyans were coming from. Wa Kenya wengi sayi, hawanke amini kuna mtu maali Kenya hii yako na food and haiza pika for 90 hours straight. Haters wanasema, maliha angetaka kupata views mob from watu wako online. Kuangalia vitu za kukula. Angengia live talks, live TikTok sa sita usiku. Eh hey, manze, Maliha cooked over 400 recipes of traditional and international cuisines and she had these encouraging words uh, for the youth again in the last uh, record. Youth out there, if you have a talent in anything, let, it, let alone be cooking, you just have to be persistent in yourself. I have, uh, I love people who have the youth at heart. Now unaisikia tu. And I love the encouragement for the youth. Lakini mahali Guinness Book of Records wanashikia ma youth na kuvunja record. Especially hiyo area ni yati. Hata ungangane aji. Hakuna vile utapika ugali mayai for 90 hours. <laughs> I wezi bana. Unless wa change waseme competition ikuwe who holds the record ya kukula ugali mayai the most times. <laughs> eh? Alafa po kwa ugali mayai mazina joma bachelors wawu wana moto na criticism kwa madem. Jua kuchemisha mayai in under, in under three minutes. Now, uh, <laughs> miku wanza ucheka sana nikisikia Dema nasema, oh, chali yangu ni treat kama mayai. <laughs> That's not a compliment. We have a great show lined up for you. Our guest for this episode uh, gave us elite money vibes the last time he was on Secrets of the Game and he promised to come back soon and share more. Guess who that is? Ah, wasi, 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 exactly. Back on the show with more good vibes on... Um, the money vibes vile nimesema, the billionaire who believes everybody has a chance to achieve financial freedom and has decided to share the formula with as many people as possible. Jimmy Wanjigi is in the house. <laughs> Asante. Asante sana. We'll be talking to him in a bit. But first, to Malise Mbwembweza hii wiki. Uh, now, a Kisumu-based journalist was a major topic of discussion this week after he released a video accusing a content creator and it was this Jojo of eating his 700,000. Okay. <laughs> At this, even the Umeamua, after all that, sasa unaona ni kama wewe umefika. Okay, but my 700,000 na iPhone Lazima urudishe. Ya. Yeah. Ni lazima urudishe. Hata kama ndiyo unatumia kukreate content. <laughs> hey manzi, that's cold. To this, the content creator has responded by advising the journalist to focus on his healing. <laughs> 
Maze, and then she went ahead to say, akauliza, what is 700,000? Alafa akaji explain, kusama, kama una spend 700, kama una date, mtu una spend 700,000 on you, hiyo siku kula pesa yake, ati kuna wanaume uku, wananuli ya madem, manyumba za 3.1 million, na hawajawai sema. And that coming from a luo man, uyo ni adhisa mesema, ati, don't you think, uo msia na jaribu kushemu, wana ume wajaluo? <laughs> now that is deep and extreme. But trudi nyuma kidogo, to give credit where credit is due, huyu, ni mtu analia vila mepoteza 700k. Okay, but my 700,000 na iPhone lazima urudishe. Now, as per Luo standards, that guy is screaming. <laughs> eh, hey, even ndiyo mjaka wako na doa na piganganduru. <laughs> mtu anayeza hata kuwa tempted kusema life has no balance. Because huyo ni mtu analia vila mekuliwa fear ya 700,000. Alafu kuna huyu mwingine analia Jiwa mpatafia imepanda na mia. Waja nilie kwa zi. Ui! Ui! Ai! Ui! 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 Waze, life has no balance. And here's another juicy beat kwa hiyo story ya Adhis. Sasa wewe na huyo profesor wako. Okay. Endele ni tu. Mimi hiyo part ndio ilifanya ni shindo kumurunia. Because mimi najua, if someone takes your money and spends it on a professor, that's school fees. Sindio? Okay. Exactly. Now behold the first Kenyan man to be awarded a degree in character development. Now to be honest, I'm stuck with your closing remark uh, in the response here at this. At Mwanaume Analia for spending 700,000 shillings is a shame to Luo men. That statement, uh, though hurtful, has vindicated Luo men. It's Luo's who are uh, walikuwanafanya maandamano. Because if by standards, uh, spending 100, 700,000 is beneath a Luo man, then there's no way any Luo man was on the street at Juunga imepita miambili. And speaking of Madamano, the police inspector general Japheth Kome was on the spot recently over remarks that politicians were hiring dead bodies to accuse police officers of killing them. The irony of the police inspector general accusing the opposition of hiring cops. <laughs> now many people, including myself, thought these claims were... Uh, these claims of hiring uh, from the afterlife were ridiculous until um, word broke that between 2016 and 2022, the National Museum of Kenya has spent 491 million shillings on ghost workers. But then again, this is confusing. I thought the core business here museum is making money from dead people. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere, Azimio leader Raila Odinga has announced that moving forward as a way of expressing themselves, instead of going to streets, kwa barabara, the party will have Kenyans staying indoors to see what the government will do. And we don't even have to bring people on the streets. We can tell people to stay home. That's another way of expressing displeasure and dissatisfaction. Next time we will not tell the people to come to the streets. We tell the people to stay in their homes. Stay in their home and see what they are going to do. Imagine staying indoors siku ya maandamano. I think in reverse psychology, ya kushika watu, watu wa Lovington na, na Runda, ndiyo waoneshe support, so siku ya maandamano, wao watoke. Ndiyo waprova wa andamani. I can't wait to watch the news yo siku. Unusual calm has been experienced in Raila Odinga's bedroom, as a, not a single Kibra resident has been seen outside. Elsewhere, Kitisuru residents has been, it has been three days since Kitisuru residents left their homes in protest against Azimio's protest to stay in their houses. <laughs> Hey, manze, in the business community has been complaining over destruction of property with products such as yogurt and apples going bad <laughs> for lack of customers. Mm. We have a great show lined up for you, Manze, uh, the former presidential uh, candidate and probably one of the most open-minded business gurus in Kenya. Jimmy Wanjiki joins us on the other end of this short commercial break. We wouldn't want you to miss this life-changing money vibes in store for us. We'll see you in the Bali. See you in a bit. Welcome back to the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. Please allow me to eat a episode back to school. Because uh, the last time our guest was here, he promised, not uh, just a few weeks ago, actually, El Sema, he's coming back to Malize the conversation, uh, Yamani Vibes, and he's made his promise. Jimmy Wanjiki is in the house. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Karibu sana. You have a very interesting definition of financial freedom, right? Mm. Uh, please give us a view of what your perspective is of what financial freedom is when you tasted it uh, when you 
when you went the independent path, when you tested it, and what gave you the map of where you are going before we talk about the circulation of money? I, 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 the last time I was employed was many years ago, before I started Biashara. And this was in Canada when I was working for butter shoes. I was selling shoes. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, to me, it was like slavery. It was like slavery. So financial freedom is the following. You know, a human being is based on needs, wants, and dreams. Needs? Wants and dreams. Wants and dreams. Yes. Am I wrong? Needs, wants, and dreams. Uh -huh. If you overcome your needs and are saturated with your wants, in other words, you generally can get what you want, then you now live your dreams. When you start living your dreams is when you have attained your financial freedom. That's why you saw some people the other day, very rich people, they decide they are going to experiment in a small submarine to go and see the Titanic. But those are not billionaires. They were. They were living a dream, taking a risk. Okay, they are living their dreams. I thought you and the risk. They were my colleagues. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you can see when they were living their dreams, they yes, were, knew they were taking a risk. Yes, yes, right? yes. Whether it was the adrenaline rush, whether it was what, they went and they died. But they were living a dream. They oh. may not have wanted to die, but you know, life is like that. First, you, are, you had a job. Uh, you say, by the way, that's the job? first time I've had in Canada. Yeah, in Canada, I had yes, a job yes, selling yes. shoes. Yes, yes, yes. You had and a I job. was a very good salesman. By you quit ama walikufuta. No, you know, it was vacation jobs. But... Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. It was vacation jobs. Yes. And I was a very good salesman. I was a top salesman. Okay. Yes. So at that point, you're looking for, let's say, is, is it really survival? Like to get money to... No, it was really just pocket money. Just it was, it was fun. Okay. Yeah. Sawa, sawa. Yeah. Then you get to a certain level, you uh, uh, probably um, investment and stuff, and then you get to your level, philanthropy and uh, dreams. Uh, in my simple-mindedness, uh, do you bargain, Kwanza? Do you bargain? Bargain forward. Uh, for anything. As in, kwa vocabulary yako, kuna vitu kama, ah, hapo umenifinya sana. <laughs> As in, uh, does the relationship with money change? Or the value of money is the same? Let, let's say, for example, the pain mm. you would feel spending mm. a thousand bob mm. uh, at a certain level mm. uh, is the same uh, pain that you would feel spending a thousand shillings now. You see what happens is mm -hmm. that you, there's nobody especially if you're in business, yes. that does not try to stretch their shilling. Nobody. If anybody tells you that it's just value does not matter, yes, yes, yes. then they have not understood their numbers. You try and stretch your shilling no matter what. But there's nothing greater than being fair. If along the way people yes. feel they've also made money with you, yes. they're the same ones who will come with better and better opportunities and bargains tomorrow. So okay. I will not stretch you and bargain until you feel, ah, doing business with Jimmy, ni asara. Chana na imutu. Correct? Yes, yes. I want yes. you to feel, I feel good. Okay. kitu yes. na Jimmy. Yes. Isn't it? Uh -huh. I, feel, I want to feel I feel good yes. uh, getting something from you. Yes. Doing something with you. Okay. Because we all make money. Yes. The greatest thing is that you all make money together. There's no other better union. Don't bring people to a table and they cause are making money. And is this thing, mm. um, does this thing go step by step? Mm. Because we've had this conversation of there's a certain age where you can actually say you have money. Uh, some, uh, we had someone put it at 52. Anyone uh, below uh, 52 and a kwambia, kona pesa, they are lying. I, I don't true? quite agree with that because I don't know where age comes into this. Mm -hmm. Age and maturity are two different things. Okay. Two different things. There are people who make it even by 35, 38. 40. So age and maturity, the key thing is maturity. Yes, practicality of a millionaire. Practicalities, at 26, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, not 26. It's, it's possible. But if they've been hard. extremely, it depends on one's character. If you've been extremely disciplined and you matured at a very young age and were able to be very clear about the course you want to take, the direction you want to take in life, yes. you can achieve it at a young age. Oh, yes. You can, but it's but you must work on yourself. It's not impossible. No, no, no. It, you I'm must work it. on yourself, because when you work on yourself, you're able to do very many things. I'll give you an example. Yes. At the age of 25, I quit drinking. Right. I, okay. I refused to take pombe anymore. 
Something because happened. Because now I said, no, nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a testimony behind it, but... Uh, no, 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 no. Nothing yes. happened. I just wanted to change my lifestyle. I was tired that every weekend, every... Sijui what tuko hapa sagre, tunakula nyama, tunakunywa. Sijui one club after the other. In fact, even in this building, there was another club I used to come to here called Lux. Eh? Eh, up, 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 this building. Yes. I'm on the next one. I can't remember. Yes, yes. Now, I can tell you, at 25... That meant that the friends I had at 25, my age mates, now started dissipating because I was no longer the fun person when you joined them. Yes. Right? Yes. So you start looking for a different conversation, people who are at a different level. At 25, the people I was associating with were beyond 40. Yes. And the greatest thing with that is that I learned lessons very fast. Because you sit around. You ask me about mentorship. Yes. You sit around and hear and absorb things from people who've had experience. So you get life, vital life lessons. By the time I was 30, generally in comparison to my age mates, yes. I was doing very well. Okay. Very well. I had a life that was focused and disciplined. I was trying to actuate a direction. Okay? Okay. So... It depends on one's personality. You can achieve it below, below the age of 52. But you must work on self. There's nothing self. like you are born like that. No, no, no. There's luck. In everything, there's also luck. Right? But luck is an extension of ability. You must put in the effort and luck comes. You must be present somewhere in the marketplace and luck comes. Okay. Right? Yes. Now, and the, you know, many people also say those are blessings of God. Right? Yes. The, yes. the extra that you didn't see. Yes. That is God. Luck. Whatever you want to call it. Energy. Okay. But you must be present in the marketplace. You can't be sitting at home sleeping the whole day. Or sitting in a bar all day. And then you think now opportunity will come. It won't come. Or the little money you get. Instead of going to have a drink with people who are educating you, you're going to just go and dance and waste your time and get drunk. Okay. Go and spend time where you learn even one vital lesson from so, somebody. It will open uh, your mind to so much. And Kenyans are very quick. The one thing we were born with, we were blessed with good kitchens here so in this country. Rule uh, number one, get mm. drunk with smart people. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so uh, mentorship also played a very big role. Too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, apart from mentorship, mentorship is also just understanding what goes on in the world, eh? Yes. Through other people's eyes. Uh -huh. Right? It opens you up phenomenally. Because what you think is a straight line, you yes. realize is not necessarily that straight. And there are a lot of gaps and opportunities that you can seize. And as a, as a young man, as a 25-year-old, and even for the people watching, how do you, what, what are some, what's the frame of mind you need to create for yourself to be able to hang out with someone almost twice your age and they will, uh, you, to benefit from that engagement? You've got to be a good listener. You've got to, in your own self, be somebody that people feel you actually are seeking growth. Because if they genuinely feel it, they'll keep you around. There are things uh, mm -hmm. in your experience that keep people poor, right? Mm -hmm. Already you've said that um, uh, being employed uh, sort of is you trading your dreams mm -hmm. for a small token mm -hmm. of appreciation. Uh, there's also this conversation of uh, what really wealth means. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you should, okay, people, things like, things that keep people poor, what on a semanga, first of all, uh, buying a car, uh, nowadays, the, the conversation has changed to buying a house. Mm. In your experience and your vast experience in business, mm. what's the sure bet way mm. uh, to stay poor? To st <laughs> 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 I'll tell you, flossing. He flossing here, yeah, <laughs> uh, Vijana. Hey. That one, I can assure you, if you think you are going to live on the basis of your image to other people, that is the worst. Because that's when you get into those buying cars, buying all those things that consume your money. A car, you take it out of the showroom, it depreciates in value. It depreciates in value. The minute you drive it out, even if you try and sell it there, you get less than you had paid for the showroom. Yes. Those are consumers. 
Even a house that you stay in consumes. The only appreciation you have is that if you bought well, then the value of land appreciate. will appreciate. So when you sell later, there's value. And there's also the sense of security. If you own your own house, it's better than if you're renting. Mm -hmm. But anything that is consuming, that is not adding, you're in trouble. So live within your means. But I don't want you to forget something. One must get over their needs, must achieve their wants. So that they can because I mean, choice. life must be kidogo enjoyable, isn't it? Or you can't, mm. you can't just say I'm living just to eat. But food. living your means means huh? you accept. Even if you're, you're eating poor. food today, you must say even ata ile niliona kuna another samaki being made somewhere that looks very good. I want that one, isn't it? Uh, tasty food. You, but you are great, kidogo. Means, huh? Living within your means means you have accepted that you're poor. No, no. You must achieve a goal in your life, and you must have the mentality in your life. Okay. I must overcome my needs. Okay. And I'm capable. God gave me a brain and physical health to overcome my needs. Okay. My needs are also including health. And I must have an achievement to get my wants. The little things that make us happy. Ata ile pombe you drink on the weekend. That's a want. You don't need it. Okay. Okay? Then you must reach a, stable, a level of going for your dreams. You must reach that level. And it comes, as you are saying, from mentality. Yes. Right? Yes. Firstly, understand that we are all born capable. And in God's eyes, we are all born equal. Right? Yes. But with different environments. Yes. Okay? But even in that environment, yes. if you have self-worth and discipline, putting God first, there's nothing you cannot achieve if you are determined. And this knowledge is at our fingertips. It is there. Yes. Food is something that will never go away. It's a need. Correct? Yes, yes, yes. It's a need. Aye. Then in the same food, there is also medicine. That has now become a need in the world. There are very many things you can grow that are medicine. So you're satisfying needs. You see, just like you as a human being, you want to overcome needs, wants, and dreams. That is also your soccer. Right? That's where so the I business think is. That's where business is. What are your needs? You need water. You need food. You need air. What else do you need? You need health. Right? Yeah. So if I have got Biashara, I think, am I in the needs? Am I going to sell you needs? Am I going to sell you food? Am I going to sell you health? Am I going to sell you water? Correct? Yes. Then you go to wants. Your nice three-piece suit. That's a want. It's not a need. And that also explains rejection because once you Correct. understand the needs, you then don't you have to struggle. You don't have to struggle. Once you've got needs, then you go to wants. Wants is also biashara. If you target a needs uh, environment mm. with a product of wants, you will lose. Fail. You will fail. If you target the, a wants the market with a, a needs, needs product, market, you fail. You lose. Yes. Now, for example, food at needs is maybe ugali. All right? Yes. Food at once is lobster. So if you have, yeah, it's still food, yes. but now it's once. So now you have a, a community that has wants. In other words, they have more purchasing power. Yes, yes, yes. So now they don't want to just eat ugali. They also want to eat lobster and want to eat these fine things of life, all these nice pastas they see being made. Now if you target them and there's big enough market, you thrive because you're in, many people are in wants. Then dreams become another avenue. Yes, yes. Right? What are people's dreams? Do they want to be tourists all over the world? So if you're catering for that, do they want to go on a plane, a luxury lot, yacht? What do they want? Those are dreams. If you cater for that and there's a big enough market, you will get it. Six out of ten are in needs. Needs. What are the needs? Food, Food water, shelter, shelter and you. Needs. Okay. Right? So only four are probably in the wants. How many are those and where are they? So you do your demographics. This is something even supermarkets do everywhere. There are some markets, they have bigger stores, other smaller stores. And the items they stock, depending on the area, they know. Here, people's purchasing power is this much. There, it is higher. All right? So they stock that way. So they position that way. 
kitu sikudanganya ti una, una, you go there and unasema hapa hakuna supermarket na kaa nikileta supermarket hapa itaweza ah unajidanganya hapa hakuna car wash i will bring a car wash no. i've never seen a car wash how many people have cars there how many people have cars who care for that car wash yeah okay. you are pricing yourself out so understand where you are so okay. that's why my advice since we are six out of ten poor yes, yes. needs okay thank you for being kind enough to share your time with us Asante. it's one of the most valuable resource that you've ever gifted us Asante and the wicked edition family daktari thank you for inviting me it's been karibu. great being here karibu Asante sana. karibu tena na tena Asante Asante. Sana. god bless you god yeah. bless you thank you that's thank it for the much. wicked edition see you next week my name is dr kingori